The Butterfly by James M. Cain Dramatized by Adrian Bean She was sitting on the stoop when I came in from the fields. Her suitcase beside her and one foot on the other knee where she was shaking a shoe out that seemed to have a stone in it. She was 19 or 20 with light hair, blue eyes and a pretty shape. Her clothes were better than most mountain girls have even if they were dusty like she'd walked up from the road where the bus ran. When she saw me looking at her she laughed and I felt my face go hot. <laughs> Hello. Is there something you want, miss? Well, how can I tell till I know what you've got? You lost? No, nope. don't think so. Because if you're looking for directions, maybe I can help. Oh, I know where I'm going. And it looks like I found it. Jess Tyler. How'd you know my name? Oh, there's lots of things I know. Miss, I don't like people making fun of me. I asked you once. What do you want? It's supper time. Can't you take a hint? I kind of feel like I could put away a little food. Oh. Well, I never sent anybody away hungry. That's what I heard. <laughs> well, I guess you'd better come inside. <laughs> Uh, that milk's fresh. That's why it's not cold. I like it warm. With foam on it. She reached across the kitchen table and linked little fingers with me. And her eyes got a funny look in them. Like I was pretty slow. Miss, you can stop doing that. What? How old do you think I am? I know how old you are. You're 42. Well, to you, 42 may look old. But to me, I don't feel old. You don't watch out. Something might happen to you. <laughs> Maybe I want something to happen. You're a Morgan, ain't you? What makes you say that? What you just said. And you favor them. They all look alike. The way you say it, it's nothing to be proud of. Well, still... I guess no man likes his wife's family. He might if he liked his wife. Didn't you like Belle? Once I loved her. But she killed it. How'd she do that? I don't want to talk about it. Did other men have something to do with it? Like Moke Blue? Moke Blue. Even now, I couldn't hear his name without a sick feeling in the stomach. She was two-timing you with Moke, wasn't she? And you put her out. I never put her out. She left me. It was after the mine closed down and the seam feathered out to nothing. You sound awful bitter. I told you once, I don't want to talk about it. It all happened a long time ago. You ever see her? No. Not since she ran off and took my baby girl with her. Look, miss. I don't know what business this is of yours. So if there's somewhere you want to go, I'll take you right there in my truck. No, don't make me go. Not after what I've been through, please. I'm sorry, miss. But you got to. I thought you were going to help me. Please, don't make me go. I couldn't stand it. Don't you know who I am? No, I don't. Well, I'm Katie. Who? I'm your little girl. My little girl. Could it be? It was 18 years since I looked into those eyes and held that tiny hand. Yep. It's me. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> oh. So I took her in my arms and told her to stay. I fixed up the back room for her and took my own blankets to the stable where there's a bunk I can sleep in. 
But all the time my heart was pounding at the way she made me feel. And I could see she knew how she made me feel. And didn't care. I expect it gets cold out here at night. Some. But I'll manage. Cabin's warm. I know. <laughs> What you saying? Well, you tell me what I'm saying. Sounds like the devil talking to me. Well, hey, don't he sound like a preacher? I better watch I don't get thrown down into hellfire. Don't do to mock the church, Katie. <laughs> But that's something else you got from the Morgans. Well, hell, I was only fooling. You want to watch what you say. A girl could get herself in trouble if she goes around talking like that to men. You're starting to sound like your mother. Well, that's a horrible thing to say. Oh, I'm sorry, Katie. Don't touch me. I didn't mean it's to horrible. say that. Horrible. Especially when she's so sick. Belle's sickness always came out of a bottle. Not this time. Her lungs are bad. She got consumption. Look, I'm sorry. But I got cause to say what I said. I knew her and her family. Knew what they got up to. And some things run in the blood. And when I hear you say things like you just said, I'm worried. Now tell me. Why you come to see me now, after all these years? I just wanted to meet my daddy. That's all. Good night, Jess. Next morning being Sunday, after breakfast I drove us to church for the preaching. Belle talk much about me? Anything good, I mean. Well, sure. It was on account of you I wanted to go to school. Because I knew you read and wrote and went to church. So I studied real hard. And then when I graduated, I led the class. And last year, they gave me a job helping to teach second grade. You? Teaching? <laughs> you should have heard the talk. A minor's girl teaching school. There was even a piece in the paper about it. Well, well we're here. Well, I'm proud of you. Daughter of mine. Teaching school. And then he came along. Who's he? Wash Blount. He belonged to the Cole family? Uh-huh. His father owns the Llewellyn mine. And because he used to be a miner, he thinks a miner's girl ain't good enough for his son. Uh -huh. So he kept after Wash, and at Easter he left me. Now oh, you'll get over it. Well, I suppose I would. Except about a month ago in July, I had a baby boy. A baby? You got a baby? First I find me a daughter, and then I'm a granddaddy? Well, you don't need to sound so happy about it. Why not? A baby! When am I going to see him? You ain't. Belle's taking care of him. I hate him. You can't hate a baby. Now, hate and wash, I'd understand, on account of he left you in the lurch. But a baby... Well, who are you to be having so much to say on the subject? They made me quit school because of it. Oh, to hell with it. Oh, 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 come on. We're late. Service has already started. In church, all through the singing and Mr. Rivers preaching, I kept thinking about Katie and me. How even though we tried to do the right thing, we still got treated bad. Her and this wash blount leaving her with a baby. And me and Belle and her leaving me for Moak Blue. But all during the preaching, Katie kept looking out the window at the mountainside, and I don't think she listened to a word that was said. You always listen to this stuff? I like it. Mind if I find something else? Okay. <laughs> 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 
Mighty noisy, ain't it? I like it. What you do with all that corn you grow? Uh, feed it to the stock, mostly. Two mules, six hogs, two cows, and a few chickens eat up all that corn? My, they got big appetites. <laughs> Some of it I sell. How much you get? Whatever they pay. This year, a dollar ten. A bushel of corn's worth more than that. <laughs> Who'll pay you more? Cafe, maybe. What you getting at? Meal it, mash it, and run it off once. You can get five dollars a gallon for it. You put it away in barrels for a couple of months. You can get ten, maybe more. Ah, uh, and don't you know it's against the law to make whiskey? A lot of things are against the law. And I don't do them. Oh, Jess, I just want some money. What for? Clothes. The clothes you're wearing look nice. They're all right for a church on a mountain, <sighs> but in the city they look pretty sick. A church is better for you than the city. I want to get out of here, see some life, you know. Is it so bad for a girl to want to make something of herself? Why don't we give it a try? Because it's wrong. I said it ain't happening, and there's an end to it. Next morning, she went off after breakfast, and didn't come home till ten o'clock at night. Where you been all this time? I've been worried sick. No need to worry on my account. I got me a job. Job? <laughs> Doing what? A waitress in the White Horse Cafe. Uh, you know what kind of place that is? <laughs> Cause I do. It's a place pays me money. Good money at that. Uh, Tain't no decent place for a young woman. Oh, now I ain't having But she my wouldn't daughter. take no for an answer. It went on like that for quite a while. She staying out till ten, eleven, twelve at night, and me going crazy. Especially when she brung home clothes she bought the way she told it with tip money. But they must have been awfully big tips. Then came the night she didn't come home at all. I went down to meet the last bus, but she weren't on it. So I drove to Carbon City and looked everywhere, but I couldn't find her. I came back, lay on my bunk, did my morning work, and then I knew what I was going to do. When Katie finally showed up, I took her up the mountain to an old abandoned shack left over from the mining days. Wow, we. Where'd you find this, Jess? You like it? How much does it hold? A、uh, hundred gallons. That big enough? <laughs> big enough. <laughs> Used to belong to the mine superintendent, but he left it up here when they closed down and cleared out. Get us some barrels and a few things from the store, and it should do the job, I reckon. Well, you mean you want to do it with the corn? I guess so. Oh, you be. On condition you quit working at the White Horse Cafe and stay here with me. But I like it there. It ain't good for you, and I can't stand it when you're gone. I worry about you, Katie. Mm-hmm. Split the money fifty-fifty. <laughs> Anything. Shake. <laughs> But where are we gonna do it? This place ain't right. I've been thinking about that. I ain't never been in a mine tunnel before. Even with the lamp, you can't see much. Hold my hand. Your eyes soon get used to the dark. <gasps> Rats! Whoa! Hold there. Sure, there's rats. You know, a mine shaft where there ain't rats. I hate 'em. Can't you kill 'em? That's the miner's best friend. 'Cause if something's going to happen, they know it before God knows it, and they run out with the men right on their tail. Okay. Anyway, if we're going to do this, we need a secret place. 
Nobody comes to this tunnel since the mine shut down. Come on. Yeah, it's all here, Katie. Everything just like we want it. Especially where this ventilation shaft comes down from the surface. See? Yeah. I can see the clouds. Ain't they fast? <laughs> How far up's it go? Uh, about 30, 40 feet. <laughs> it's light enough down here to see what we're doing. We even got our own water coming down the side of the shaft. <laughs> <laughs> it's sweet. I tasted it. Ain't nobody will find the top of that shaft or see it from down on the road. <laughs> It'll be our secret place. So I did the fixing and the hauling and the lifting while Katie took the truck into Carbon City to buy the things we needed. So I got the tubs for the mash, kegs for aging the liquor, and a hydrometer. <laughs> What's a hydrometer? It's for showing how much alcohol's in the booze. More alcohol, more money. Oh. The hydrometer was in a long pasteboard box stamped Property of Carbon City High School. I kept telling myself I'd ask her about that, but I never did. After a long time, staying up late mealing corn and making charcoal, came the day when we warmed some water in the still and put down our first mash. And three days after that, we made our first run. Still can't see nothing. Shh. Just wait. <laughs> Here she comes. Our first drop of whiskey fell in the fruit jar we had under it. Then pretty soon there came another drop. Then another. Then a stream. The color of water. But clearer than any water you ever saw. <laughs> Looks like we're in business. Let's celebrate. We shouldn't drink that. Well, you tasted it? Uh-uh. But I know it's bad. Oh, try it. Come on. Live a little, Jess. I don't know. We ought to taste it. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it, Katie. I'll have a drink if I want to. No, you won't. Will you kindly tell me why? Because... Because it's wrong. You really believe all that church stuff? Yes, I do. For God's sake, Jess. I said no. Oh! Why are you always shouting at me? I'm sorry, Katie. I ain't Belle. I know you ain't. It ain't my fault she left you. I never said it was. Why'd you keep on at me? It's because I see a lot of Belle in you. And when you act like this, it scares me. The way I... you act, I think you must hate me. I don't hate you, Katie. Believe me, I don't. I... I love you. What I couldn't tell Katie was that by then, I loved her so much I wanted to be weak. And with liquor in me, I didn't know what I would do. You just gotta keep off the whiskey. You heard me, Katie? That's one thing we don't do. The night we drove into Carbon City with our first hundred quarts, I thought I would die. Come on, Katie. Come on. We said it, she'd do the talking. So I sat in the cab and wiped off the sweat. <laughs> Ten dollars a gallon. Huh. I'll give you four. <laughs> well, then I'll take my business elsewhere. <laughs> The cafe man took another swig while she stood there with her hands on her hips. Looking at him so sinful it made me sick to think she was any part of me. Okay. Six. <laughs> Not a dollar more. You got yourself a deal, mister. A <laughs> hundred and fifty. A hundred and fifty? Come on, Jess. Let's go somewhere and have a good time. Uh. 
we no sooner stepped inside the White Horse Cafe than I knew all the stories I'd heard were true. The place reeked of sin. Uh, we're going home. <laughs> if you don't like it here, you can go, but I'm staying. And I'm sure somebody will take me in for the night. Well, okay, but we ain't staying long. Down the bar was a girl and two men. And when one of them and the girl left, the other one got up and asked Katie to dance. Each time a tune stopped, they put more money in the music box and danced again, swinging slowly with their faces up to each other, whispering. Then she came over and picked up her handbag. I'll be right back. Where are you going? Just for a walk, to get a little air. You're coming home. Listen, Pop, take it easy, why don't you? Do you know who I am? You're Katie's father, so she says. <laughs> and I'm taking her home. Not unless she wants to go, Pop. So sit down, have yourself a drink, and when her and me get back, you can take her home. But not before, all right? All the time he was standing over me with that sour whiskey smell on his breath and the greasy sweat staining his collar, I could feel the blood pounding in my neck, heavier and heavier, until... I ain't never been so embarrassed. How am I gonna set foot in there again? You ain't. I told you nothing good comes of drinking and dancing. <laughs> Hallelujah, praise the Lord. And don't it shame you. You were making up to two men tonight within ten minutes of each other. What's to be ashamed of? Oh, it's blood. Oh, if I hear any more of this Morgan stuff. It's what we both got to be afraid of. Shining, shooting, and shivery in their kin. That's what they say of people who live too long on one creek. I thought I was too good for that. Thought I could fight it. But I don't know what's happening to me. Today, up in that mine, I ran off five gallons of liquor that's against the law. This evening, I almost killed a man. And tonight, you'd like to have me. Oh, stop talking like that. Well, what were you fighting him for? <laughs> you must be loving me plenty. Oh, I told you, Katie. <laughs> Quit that. Who's that? Good evening. Mr. Tyler? Wash? What are you doing here? Your mama told me where I could find you. You been talking to Belle? Yes, sir. And I've been talking to my pa, too. I said I'd had enough of being told what to do. I'm 21 now, and, well, Katie, I, I told him I'm going to marry you. That is, if you still want me. Marry me? Marry me? Why, well, yes! <laughs> <laughs> After we'd all calmed down and shaken hands and whatnot, we sat at the table and talked. Wash and Katie decided that they'd get married as soon as they could, and that they'd bring baby Danny to the cabin to stay while they fixed somewhere to live. Look who's here, Danny. <laughs> Say hello to Granddaddy. Oh, hello, Danny. <laughs> My, but he's handsome. Ain't he just? He takes after his grandpa, I'd say, Mr. Tyler. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, I'll take Danny's things into the bedroom, Katie. Excuse me. <laughs> I knew it wasn't true. What wasn't true? When you said you hated him. Well, I hated that they wouldn't let me keep him. But now he's mine, and I love him. Belle was real bad. Yeah? Doctor says she ain't got long to live. Oh, I'm sorry, Katie. 
Ain't he cute? <laughs> he is. The cutest little child I ever saw. <laughs> Except you, Katie. Uh, here. You hold him. Oh, uh, uh, Wash uh, that diaper. Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> hey. What's that? What? On his belly. Oh, that's his birthmark. <laughs> it looked for all the world like a small brown bug. Sitting on his stomach. Just below his navel. Oh, we call that his butterfly. Eh? Don't we, son? <laughs> oh, yeah. It looks like a butterfly now. <laughs> well, you almost scared me to death, little fella. <laughs> Anyone could see what Katie saw in Wash Blount. It turned out his family were mountain people, like us. And that made me feel better about him. But when he looked at Katie the way he did, and she smiled back at him, I had to walk away for fear they'd see the tears in my eyes. I kept telling myself it was all right. It was just what I'd been praying for. If she could love Wash and her child, and stop all this drinking and dancing and carrying on, it was the best thing all round. Wasn't it? Well, that was delicious, Katie. Mm. You got a daughter any man be proud of, Mr. Tyler. <laughs> now, I think it's time I took my son for a look around the place. What do you say, old timer? My, but you're heavy. See you later. All right. Yeah. Well? Well, what? Well, do you like him? <laughs> uh, suppose so. You suppose so? Well, what's that supposed to mean? Well, what do you want me to say? Well, it wouldn't kill you to say something nice about the man I aim to marry. You serious? <laughs> you really gonna marry him? Well, listen to you, Jess. I thought that would please you in all your God-fearing church affairs. <sighs> I'm giving your precious grandson a father to parade around town. Ah, uh, well, yes, but... But what? Well, them things you used to say up in the mine. Uh, the way you used to look at me when you'd had a drink. When I'd had a drink. Oh. That weren't me talking, not your daughter. Like you said, that was some dumb Morgan Mountain girl who didn't know any better than to follow her urges. You could see it was wrong, and you fought it. And you were right to do that. Right for both of us. Well, I want you to be happy. And if the boy wants to marry you, you have my blessing. <laughs> Jess? Jess Tyler? Oh. That's Moke. What's he want? Hold your horses. I'm coming. Well, Moke Blue. You better say what you want and be quick about it. Katie around? Why you asking? I got some news for her. About Belle. Guess you should know about it, too. had been and told us that she needed more cracked ice, like we usually give her when her lungs is bad. But this time, it didn't seem to make no difference. She got weaker and weaker, and the last thing she said was, where's my little Katie? And darling Danny, bring them to me, will you? God. But there weren't no time. She took real bad all of a sudden, and then she just give out. I should have been there, Wash. I should have. Hey, Katie. No, oh, you mustn't feel bad about it, Katie. Taint your fault. That's not the story. 
What what do you mean? You ain't telling us what really happened, Moke. And you know it. Don't start on me. Come on. Out with it. (sighs) Moke. Well, we kind of had a... Well, we had words. Uh, And? Belle went for me with a knife. I knew it. Oh, she was crazy. Like she was possessed. I I don't know why, but but she just went for me. I didn't do nothing but hold her off. But I I guess the the effort of it all just broke her. She weren't never going to come back from that. Yeah. So what'd you do to make her come after you with a knife? Oh, I mean, you know Belle. She could start a fight in an empty barn. Especially with the booze in her. I don't know why. Honest, I don't. Anyway, I come to tell you, that's all. The burying's tomorrow. Well, thank you. I appreciate you coming, Moke. You best be going, then. Yeah, I will. Um, only, can I see Danny first? I ain't seen the little feller in ages. I miss him. Sure, he's in his crib. I'll get him. (laughs) Here's your mom. Well, well. Here's old Moke to say hello. You missed me, huh? You missed me. Can I hold him? Sure. No. Why the hell not? Well, he's tired. Needs some sleep. Better put him back down, huh, Katie? I guess you're right. Time you were leaving, Moke. (sighs) Fine. See you at the church tomorrow, Katie. Morning of the Baron, I put on my old suit and looked in the mirror. The man staring back at me looked real old and empty. Spite of everything, the wrong she'd done me over Moke and Katie, I felt that part of me had died with Belle. And I was sorry in all these years we hadn't been able to talk about what went wrong between us. When we got to the church, Moke Blue was standing in front of the porch. Morning, Katie. Morning, Moke. <clears throat> Whoa, hold on, Jess. Nothing was said about you coming in. Whoa. I don't need no special invitation. It's all right for Katie. But Jess, you stay out. And you, Mr. Blount. Oh, yeah? Who says so? I do. Ed Blue. This ain't no business of yours. Moke's my half-brother. And us blues, we look out for each other. Belle was my wife. Before the law, maybe. But God knows she was mine. You dirty son of a bitch! Jess, Walsh, I don't like this either. And if I could leave with you right now, I would. But it's my mother's funeral. I can't just turn my back on her. Then there's nothing we can do but turn around and walk away, Jess. Walsh is right. You listen here, Moke Blue. I'm going to be married tomorrow. And at my wedding, I only want friends. Now, I've tried to treat you as decent as I know how on account of Belle. But if you show up at my wedding, I'm going to ask Jess to do to you exactly what you've done to him. Keep you out. Even if he's got to take a rifle to do it. Now, Ed, put that gun down. And Moke, let's go inside so we can bury my mama. And after that, you stay out of my life. I'm so mad, Jess. We should go now and get our guns and come back and clean the place out. We can't do that, Wash. Why not? Well, in the first place, it's a funeral. And it's entitled not to be busted up by any shooting. And in the second place, if I start anything like that, they'll find some way to get back at Danny. I forgot about that. Anyway, you heard what Katie said about not letting Moke come to the wedding? I suppose when it comes to it, 
That satisfies me if it does you. It satisfies me. Then to hell with him. The morning of Katie's wedding, I was up before dawn. I got all my feeding and milking done, got cleaned up and put on my best suit. I'd never worn a flower in my life, but I thought I'd put one in my buttonhole for Katie's wedding. So I headed down to the creek, where I knew there were some wild roses at the edge of the woods. I only just got started when up on the mountainside I saw the flash of sunlight on gunmetal and something moving about in the brush. Now, so far as the deputy was concerned, that whiskey still up there I knew nothing about, had never seen and never heard of. But I needed to know who it was, because nobody else had any business up there. I crossed the creek, kept under the cliff so I couldn't be seen, and hit the path to the timbered entrance we used for the tunnel. I climbed the ladder up the ventilation shaft, and when I got to the top, I raised my head real slow, because if a deputy marshal had me covered with his rifle, I'd be a sitting duck. But it weren't no deputy. It was Moke Blue, and across his knees was the same Winchester Ed pulled on me outside the church. And where he was setting was the one spot on the mountainside where he could get a good aim on a sharp bend in the road where I'd have to slow the truck down to almost a stop on my way to the wedding. It was hot, and Moke had taken off his shirt. My heart nearly stopped beating, and I almost let go of the ladder. I could see why Bell had fought with him, why he had wanted to see Danny so badly, why he hated Wash and all the rest of it. Just below his navel was the butterfly. Jess, you're crazy. Lots of people got birthmarks. If the birthmark was all, I might not pay any attention to it either, but it's not. You seen Moke with Danny? You heard how Belle tried to kill him the night she died. So? That's because Danny's his child. Oh. And he knew it from the birthmark. And so did Belle. And so did Katie. Oh. Now, how could a baby and a man have the same birthmark and it not mean anything? Listen, Jess, it just can't be true. In the first place, Katie's not that kind of girl. And if she was with Moke... He's almost as old as you are. He's 39. That's right. Old enough to be her father. She wouldn't fool around with a man that age. <laughs> she would. I don't like to tell you this, Wash. But I seen the way Katie carries on down at the White Horse. Oh. With man twice her age. Oh. And, and... I'll get that. It was Wash's folks all smiles and dressed for the wedding. While he was busy telling them there weren't going to be no wedding, I snuck out and drove the truck back up the mountainside. I stopped before I reached the bend, took my rifle, and crept round to the mine entrance. As I got to the top of the ladder, Moke was still there, eating beans out of a can with his knife. Before he had a chance to see me, I drew a bead on the butterfly, and... You dirty son of a... Hello, Moke. Oh, that'd be just like you to shoot me in the belly, and then leave me here to die. <laughs> I ain't leaving you. And I shot you where you had it coming. What the hell are you talking about? I shot you in the butterfly. So that's what you did for your country? Left a poor little kid that's birthmarked like you? Well, you don't do it with my daughter and live to tell the tale. Katie never done nothing with me. You can ask her. I'll attend to her later. Yeah, yeah, I bet you will. You'll whoop her with a harness trace and throw her out with that religion-crazy disposition you got. But you won't throw Danny out 
Oh no, you'll keep him because you're crazy about him. No matter what she done, he's yours. He's your grandchild, ain't he? Well now you will listen, you rotten, belly-shooting, dumb jackass. He ain't your grandchild. He's mine. What you say? That butterfly birthmark? Yeah, we got a butterfly in the family. But only the men got it, see? If the child's a girl, it skips to the next boy. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> we never knew it, Belle and me, that Katie was really ours. Until Danny came along, and we seen the butterfly. Then we knew. So Belle two-timed me with you even before she left? <laughs> the way you treated her? Why not? Yeah. Oh! Oh, let me go, you swamp singing! I dragged him to the opening of the shaft. Oh, no, Jeff! Please! No! And dragged his body 200 feet along the tunnel, till I came to a part where the roof was blistering and ready to fall. Then I set a couple of sticks of dynamite in the hanging pieces, either side of Moke, lit the fuses, and ran. The top of the tunnel was blocked up solid with rock, with Moke Blue underneath it. He could just as well have been at the bottom of the sea, so far as anybody in the world could find him. When I got to the creek, I took the empty shell out of my gun, threw it in the water, put a fresh one in the chamber, and cleaned the barrel so it looked like it hadn't been fired since it was loaded. Only then did I realize what it meant. What Moke told me. Katie wasn't my daughter after all. Now I was free to show her how I really loved her. Now we could be together. Something told me that since Wash canceled the wedding, I knew just where she would be. Give me another whiskey. Make that two. Since when do you take a drink, Jess? Uh, since I expected to give a girl away at her wedding, and she left me at the church. You were at the church? Yeah, I got there late, but the place was empty. If you were eloping, why couldn't you tell me? <laughs> Does it look like I eloped? Uh, what happened then? Wash didn't come to the church, Jess. Guess his folks talked him out of it. Where's Danny? Wash took him. Funny life, ain't it, Jess? Yeah. It's funny, all right. Who gives a damn? Come on, let's dance. I never danced before. <laughs> I'll teach you. But I didn't need much teaching. Cause all we did was stand there in each other's arms, swinging in time to the music and touching our faces together. She held her body real close to mine. And this time, I didn't push her away. We should get married. <laughs> Are you crazy? I mean it. Let's get married. <laughs> Jess, you ought to get drunk more often so it wouldn't do such funny things to you. Well, they wouldn't let us, you know that. Why not? I got some money put by, and there's the money we made from the still. I could give you the good life you say you want. But everybody knows us. We could say no relation. Not here, we couldn't. Everyone knows me from the drinks I've served in this honky-tonk. All right. We'll go to Gilroy. Don't they ask you a whole lot of stuff about who your folks were and where you was born and all that? Well, who would I say? You could say Moke Blue. <laughs> what? For a second, she sobered up. While she looked at me with the kind of fire in her eye a cat gets in front of a light. Don't you ever ask me to say that. Don't even think it. It 
was bad enough having him around my own mother, but having to say I was any part of him would be more than I could stand. Do you hear me? I hear you. But I still want to marry you. Well, I... I suppose we could make up some names. What the hell does it matter, anyway? By virtue of the authority vested in me as an official of this county, I pronounce that you are husband and wife together. You may now kiss the bride. We stayed for two days in the Little Gilroy Hotel. And all that time I kept wondering what we were going to say when we got home. She must have been doing some thinking too. Because on the way back she said, Jess, we gotta keep this quiet. That we're married. Well, anyone sees us together like that, they'll know. We are going to see each other though. I can't do without you. I don't know, Jess. Quit tormenting me. Hey, Katie, you're forgetting. We got a hideout. It didn't take long to fix up a bed in the mine from an old mattress and a few blankets. Then she poured us some corn and came towards me. She was singing to herself and swinging her hips. Red fire shining up in her face. That was one dance she never finished. You Jess Tyler? Who wants to know? Sheriff's deputy. You Tyler? I ain't saying. Jess? What's going on? Who is it? This here is a warrant for your arrest. Jess Tyler, you stand before me accused of the crime of incest, consisting of sexual misconduct with your daughter, Katie Tyler, and of corrupting the morals of a minor. How do you plead? Well, I'm not sure what to say, sir. Are you guilty or not guilty? Your Honor, it looks like if I plead guilty and you hold me, then you wouldn't need Katie for a witness no more, and she could go home. But I ain't doing it without I make sure. Well, if you plead guilty, your daughter is free to go. Then I plead guilty. Set bail at $500. Now wait a minute, he's not guilty of anything. Miss Tyler, your father's already pleaded. My husband, you mean. <laughs> We got married. We made up some names and told the man in Gilroy I was 22. This is the first time I've heard of where two people went before an officer of this state and deliberately made a mockery of it and its laws. I order the court to hold this girl for the action of the grand jury. Your Honor, I'm changing that plea. This girl is not my daughter. <laughs> Whose daughter is she then? man by the name of Moke Blue. That's a lie! Who is Moke Blue? No good fella took off my first wife, Belle, about 20 years ago. And, and you knew this Moke Blue was her father? Oh, I knew I wasn't. But you raised her just the same. I never saw her from the day my first wife took her away till a year ago when she came to live with me. And you started sleeping with her? No, sir, I did not. That only started after we were married. After my first wife, Belle, she died. And where is this Moke Blue now? I don't know, sir. Young woman, is this true? Katie didn't answer, no matter how much he threatened her with contempt of court and the like. I told him about the butterfly, but it didn't seem to make no sense to them. And I thought I was sunk. Then I seen Ed Blue in the back of the courtroom, and I knew that was my chance. Ask his brother, the one that brought charges against us in the first place. Ask him if he has the same butterfly on his belly. The judge looked like he was going to explode, but he had Ed take off his shirt all the same, and sure enough, there was the butterfly. And this half-brother of yours, Moke Blue? 
He has the same birthmark? Yes, sir. He has it. And only the men in your family have it. I heard so. Tyler, in the light of this evidence, I'm not at all sure of your innocence. But I am convinced that if these birthmarks are shown to a jury, whether Moak Blue can be located or not, it's going to be impossible to get them to convict you. Case dismissed. As the people went home, Katie turned away from me. And I could feel Ed Blue's eyes burning into the back of my head like they was bullets. For the next week, Katie hardly looked at me. You could see she was working things out. Then one morning, just before daylight, she came down to the stable with the lantern. When did you first know Moke was my daddy? Before you was born, even. You're lying. I don't believe you had any idea of it when we was up in the mine every day running liquor and in town every night selling it. What makes you say that? The passes I was making. I fought you off. But why? Didn't you hear me in court? I was married. Don't make me laugh. The way you wanted me, being married wouldn't have stopped you. You hadn't seen Belle for 18 years. Own up to it, Jess. You thought I was your daughter. And you still thought I was your daughter the day we buried Belle. You seem to have it all figured out. But you found out the truth on the day I was supposed to marry Wash. I don't know what you're talking about. You were willing I should marry Wash. Glad of it. For your daughter, that makes sense. But for Moke's daughter? <laughs> no, Jess. That was the day you found out. I thought there was something funny about the way you disappeared and Wash not showing up at church. And now, God help me, I have the same feeling. No. That ain't how it was. And Moke ain't been seen since that day. And I believe you know why. No. No, you don't understand. You know what happened because you killed him. <laughs> it's funny. She was never going to believe the truth. And I had killed the one man that could prove it. Katie. Don't touch me. Don't you ever touch me again. The last thing she says to me... She tells me our marriage don't mean nothing legal, on account of her lying and being underage. And she and Wash is going to get married when she's older. And he's coming to drive her to Gilroy tonight. I peep through a crack in the stable door, and I see her run into his car. And over the rain, I can just hear the cry of a baby. Don't know how long I sit here thanking her. But it's night time when I go to the cabin for my rifle. But it ain't on the hook where I always leave it. I put on my hat and coat, light the lamp, and start for the barn to get the truck. I don't stop to see who's firing. I know who it is. My first instinct is to run back to the cabin, but... I know Ed's got me covered, and I'd be trapped like a rat in a bathtub. I run. If I can make it to the old mine, I can climb up the ventilation shaft. I'll be out on the mountainside, and from there, I can walk to where the bus stops in no time. The thunder and rain have let up for a while, and the mouth of the shaft's a small circle of moonshine. I ain't got far up, and I don't see the dark shape come in over the side, just the flash of the rifle muzzle. Ha-ha! <laughs> That's for Moke, you good for nothing! Uh, uh. I can't work it out. How does Ed know about the old mine? That's our secret. Only me and Katie... Then it hits me like a blow to the guts. She must have told Wash. She probably told him it was my idea to make the whiskey, too. Come on, Jess. You know you ain't going nowhere. I know you ain't got no gun. Now take your punishment like a man. But I ain't done nothing wrong.
Well, if you ain't coming out, I'm coming in. Listen, Ed. I knew Moke was Katie's daddy. Sure I did. As God is my witness, I didn't do nothing with Katie that weren't legal and moral. It ain't how you think. God knows I'm a good man. Please, Ed. In The Butterfly, Jess was played by John Chancer, Katie by Ashley Haddad, Wash by Solomon Mosley, Moke Blue by Jeff Mash, and The Deputy by Martin T. Sherman. The Butterfly, by James M. Cain, was dramatized by Adrian Bean. It was a BBC Cymru Wales production, directed by Kate McCall. <laughs>